something a little bit different for you today. Welcome everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here with, uh, well, with Fish's RV at Vibe at Forest River. Um, and despite the fact that this is their largest bunkhouse model, it's actually their number one most popular bunkhouse model. And I've seen things with sort of different shades of this. I've never seen it in this combination before. It, I'll tell you, it's big. I mean, it is, it is, it's approaching 40 foot long. It's a big rig but it gives us opposing living room super slides. It gives us actually enough seating for everybody that it sleeps, which is a deficiency that a lot of bunkhouses have until you get up to like mid bunk bonus rooms and giant fifth wheels. This one accomplishes that in a travel trailer. You've got, uh, you know, two sofas in the living room and a dinette and you can, that can all fold down into a sleeper, which is also crazy. You can sleep everybody, their brothers, their cousins, and their sisters, uncles, friends, and neighbors. Um, it's a little bit taller inside, which really helps the whole RV look and feel bigger. Uh, although the living room is is nice and large you got to remember like you have a private bedroom bathroom and really bang and rear bunk room but that chops the RV up into a bunch of smaller spaces so you don't always get the the feel and the impact of having a 40 foot RV now as a result I do definitely recommend three quarter ton pickup and bigger on this sucker but it's got some wild features the rear bunk room um, I love that they're including like fall guards on the upper bunk. So if you have kids that tend to roll around and thrash around at night, like my nephews were that way, my brother had to put fall guards in his bunkhouse so was, and my, my nephews didn't fall over the place. And the, I don't know if I even want to call it an outside camp kitchen. It's an outside thing convenience station, but it's a double dorm fridge outside entertainment weird arrangement that is actually kind of cool as I go through it. Like there's things about this that it's, it's not that this is a perfect RV. It's definitely got some hitches in its giddy up, but it's fun and I'd love to hear what you think about it. And I'll be the first to tell you, this RV is not for everybody. It does some things very, very cool and different and well. And some other things I think you're gonna look at it and go, nope. That's a deal breaker. That's stupid. I don't know. It's going to be, uh, you know, up to you. But that's why I go through these things and I try to share what I call the good with the bad with everything in between to help you kind of decide. Because, like, it's sweet that we have all the extra sofa space in here. That's something bunkhouses don't usually do. A lot of times you'll get a super slide like this where it's a sofa and a dinette over here. But on the other side, usually nothing, you know. And this one actually, you know, bulks up on that space a little bit. The trick is, it means that you never actually have a direct-facing entertainment center. And in a big family model like this, if you are stuck inside on a rainy day, that could be um, a sanity survival space, you know what I mean? You will see in a little bit, though, thankfully, that TV can pivot around. Um, I almost want to criticize them for not having a slide side window right there, but that's because this is more of a shallow slide, because this slide over here actually goes under the awning, uh, on the campsite of the RV, they did try to minimize its impact uh, in the patio area. Now, now, without question, when you open the awning with the slide open, you lost a big chunk of uh, potential kitchen space there. They are using cable slide systems in this, by the way, in case you're curious. Uh, a lot of folks have been asking that question, what slide system do they use? So based on your input, I'm trying to do a better job of mentioning little things like that as we go through our videos. Um, the kitchen, what... What kitchen there is, is actually pretty good and feature-packed. The kitchen is not actually that large, though. And again, I don't remember the model number. It's like a 3, maybe it's a 312, imagine, or something like that. does a similar thing where it has two sofas and a dinette, um, you know, in a, a big family camper. But it also has the same deficiency in that in order to really squeeze that extra living space in there, they did have to apply some extra pressure to the kitchen, which is going to be problematic for some folks. Now, one thing that is cool here is that it is six foot nine tall, which just helps open the whole thing up, especially with cable slides, which are a little bit more bulkier and intrusive into the RV. Actually, we get a little peek at some of the hardware that we have over here. And sometimes people ask, how can a cable push a slide open? It's actually quite simple. It doesn't. Cables only pull. There's one cable that pulls the slide open from the inside out. Then there's a second cable that pulls the slide shut from the outside in. When you realize it's actually two different cables and not just one big long cable doing the work, it starts to make uh, a lot more sense. Um, I didn't know that for a lot of years, though. You know, I, I say it like it's obvious. Duh. I didn't know that for a long, long time until someone finally explained it to me like last year. So <laughs> there you go. Um, Pretty much 
almost every window in the RV opens for airflow, uh, including all the windows over here, like on your, um, you know, your big super slide and the window uh, on the camp side. By the way, down here under that dinette, it's, it's easy to miss, but there are some household and USB plugs down there. Now that is a knee knocker pedestal style dinette. Um, you know what I haven't checked? A lot of the, the vibes that have been going through recently have been table and chairs. And I think that's an available option here. What I'm wondering is, yeah, that still feels flimsy to me. So this is like the second or third year in a row that I've sort of noticed that. The backer just feels like it needs to be bulked up. Now that's that's my impression. That doesn't mean that's necessarily exactly the case. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to kind of open up the floor here to some public input. Current owners or previous owners of Vibe um, RVs that had a dinette like we're looking at here, did you ever feel it was flimsy? Or once you're actually using it in person, is it okay? I'd be really kind of curious to know. Now, um, up top here, you've got a single 15,000 BTU air conditioner, but this is a huge RV with multiple, multiple rooms. Um, this is definitely one where I'd, I'd want to option on the 50 amp service and the second air conditioner myself. I couldn't imagine not having that uh, on this one. The thing is, the second air conditioner is a direct dump AC. It is located back in the bunk room. So uh, the, um, the, the front bedroom and bathroom, I am a little bit curious as to how well those will stay uh, climate controlled. In the meantime though, I think I mentioned when the video began, everything folds down for sleeping. Kinda, I, in my head, that I forgot that that was a theater seat. Can, you know, you sleep on a theater seat? Sure, but it's not like a full-on hide-a-bed. Again, that TV can pivot around, which is kind of cool. Um, take a look at everything over in the kitchen. It actually has a pretty nice pantry. It's actually fairly easy to miss, uh, all things considered, over there. Um, and over in the kitchen, it's funny. There's not actually a place to store wastebasket because they put a bunch of shelves under the sink. I kind of wish they hadn't done that, or at least only did it on one side, because the irony, when we go up into the bedroom and I open the, the front hanging wardrobe closet, you're actually going to see a wastebasket included from the factory shoved up into that space. It's sort of funny to me that they do include a wastebasket. They just don't really give you a place to put it in the kitchen directly. I don't know. Um, Probably wouldn't be the end of the world to just set it over there next to the island. By the way, very pet-friendly layout with carpetless slides on both sides, although it does maintain a little bit of a uh, kitchen toe stubber over there. Now, their cabinet, uh, like, d doors, like, hold on, you're not, the kitchen, wow, okay. So the kitchen has a big pantry, but it just sort of occurred to me, the kitchen doesn't actually have any cabinet space. It does have good drawer space, though. Like, it's got a lot of good drawer space. Your cabinets would be located under the sink or under the dinette. But anyway, whether it's a drawer face or a cabinet door, it's a seamless, one-piece thing. So there's not, like, corners that can get worked apart and, and, and wiggle loose and break over time. One of the things I actually really, really like back here, there's a couple individual little, say, like, reading lights. But this has what I call the lights out kid system, even though I just turned the lights on. But you can be like, all right, good night, you know. Good night, Sue Ellen. Good night, John boy. I don't know why Sue Ellen just turned into an old man from the Depression era, but um, in my mind... She did. Uh, maybe that's what happens when you spend one too many days in the cement pond. I'm not. I'm not sure. Now that's also a completely different show. I'm well aware that I just changed from the Waltons to uh, you know the Clampets. So don't yell at me. I get it. Um, it's cool that it has a ladder built right in. I will tell you though, have if you've never done it, uh, take your shoes off and climb one of those ladders. They hurt your feet. They hurt your feet a lot. Now, maybe because I'm well over 200 pounds, they destroy my feet. Maybe if I wasn't such a pig, it wouldn't be the case. And if you're 200 pounds or more, that doesn't mean you're a pig. I'm just very self-deprecating, and I am in terrible, terrible shape right now. I got to get back on track with that. Regardless, TV hookups up here on the wall. Um, I'd be curious, how many people would hang a TV up there for their, their kids? One thing I would mention, and it probably is not a problem, but... If you're going to hang a TV, make sure you know where the slide is going to be when the slide closes so you don't accidentally smash that sucker. And how cool is this? They have the, like, don't roll out of bed fall guards built right in here from the factory. And those are wood. 
Those are not going anywhere. Those things are very nice and solid. Um, now, if a kid thrashes around enough, could they bust the brackets out of place? Theoretically, maybe, sure, but uh, it's going to take some effort. Um, slotting that thing back in place, looking down below, some decent dresser storage capacity going on over here in the bunk room. And then flipping the other direction, I'm going to have to bust you into a little bit of a wide-angle mode view just to kind of help you, I, I, I think, grasp the whole room. But this has a classic feature that I really personally really, really like. It has the uh, the little convertible cube situation going on right here where during the day, you can have your kids back here just having a heck of a time. And something I've noticed is a lot of parents like the idea of a jackknife sofa back here, but kids don't care. I don't, uh, it, you know, the thing is a jackknife sofa kind of limits your options. This can be a big bed. It could be a single bed. It could be two separate beds. You can kind of wedge something in between there. The other thing is it allows me to ask a very important question. What's the password to the battle fort? So the answer to that question, by the way, is either lunch is ready or mom said now. <laughs> when mom says now, the... <laughs> She, uh, she has bypassed the need for a password. <laughs> At least that's been kind of my impression. Now, we've already seen all of this. And if you've watched any of my other Vibe videos, any of the Vibes that have a front bedroom and bathroom off a hallway like this, they're all exactly the same. There's absolutely no differences between them up here whatsoever. And that's not a knock against them. They actually have a pretty nice bathroom uh, in here. One of the things, again, here's a maybe a, a closer up look at the, the cabinet doors, how there is no sort of seams or anything on it. You might actually want to take a look at the storage while I have that open, wouldn't you? I will say, I've been through five or six vibes today, and they're fairly inconsistent on which rooms get wicker baskets and how many wicker baskets are included in those rooms. So... It feels like there's supposed to be that little one here in the bathroom, and it feels like there's supposed to be three under the bed, but I have run into instances where there's only two under the bed, or there's not one in the bathroom, and I don't know why. I don't know if there's rhyme or reason to it, or if it was just they got a new guy on wicker basket duty, and he does, doesn't know what he's doing. Now, this actually kind of surprised me, and not in a real positive way. The RV's got six foot nine from floor to ceiling height, but the shower pan, the, the base of the shower, it's built up so high that you don't have, um, you know, a really good headroom in that shower. The headroom in the shower really is almost exactly the same as an RV that's only six and a half foot tall. And as you may have noticed, we do have individual light switches in kind of like each of the rooms. And you'll also notice a ton of room at the base of this queen bed, because it's not a true queen. That is a Shorty McShort Pants Camp Queen approved by the Bed Goblin Union. Those are the guys that live under the bed. Like uh, at night, you see this gap down here? That's where they crawl out of from Never Neverland, second star on the right, straight on till morning. And they have those razor sharp teeth and claws that can rend flesh from bone, but they can't penetrate the bed sheets. That's where the Bed Goblin Union lives. That's Ned, Ted, and Fred, the Bed Goblin Union. Um, they're, uh, if people go, well, what about Ed? We don't talk about Ed. We don't talk about Ed, okay? Just don't. Now, in a lot of your vibes, um, up here is where there'd be another vent to install an air conditioner. But again, this one's second air conditioner installs back in the bunk room. Um, it's just kind of, it is what it is. Thankfully, it does still centrally duck some air up here um, into the uh, bedroom area. I do like the headboard, um, like, power outlets. I love it when manufacturers do that right up by the uh, bedside because I like to play with my phone at night and actually a lot of nights what I'll do I'll pop in like my right AirPod. I'll lay on my left side on my pillow and just set my phone on my side stand and I'll like watch some Netflix until I go to sleep and then I find out four episodes later I don't know what's going on cracking that open right there there's that wastebasket we were telling you about why they put it in there frankly I don't know the fact is though they do it doesn't have to make sense. They just do it. It's probably a situation where they standardize uh, a wastebasket in every single model. 
So they don't know where else to put it. So they put it in the only cabinet where it's going to fit. I, I, it, it would make more sense to me that you make a cabinet that fits the wastebasket that you're going to force include. But what do I know? That sounds silly, right? Anyway, cracking that closet open right there. I love the little hanging organizer that they include with it. It's nothing major, nothing flashy or fancy, but it gets the job done. Now, I've never closed the slides on this model before, but I'm looking at where that sofa slide is located in relation to... The, uh, the wall here and where the refrigerator is. And basically, other than the front bedroom and the bathroom, I'm pretty confident the road mode's about to get really bad really fast. Well, actually, um, you can slip through here better than I expected, but that doesn't actually help matters whatsoever because uh, the uh, even though I can walk back here, that refrigerator is just dead landlocked because of the island, but there is a little bit of a workaround around that here. If you can fold down the stable steps, those stick out further than this shallow kitchen slide. So if you can open the steps enough to get in here, theoretically, you should have the room to be able to open that slide up. I thought you'd like to see how a grown adult can actually still slide through there. I'm not saying that's an awesome solution. I'm saying that in a real pinch, if it really came down to it, you could make it work if you had to. So let's get this right out of the way. This trailer is big. And even though Vibe is a very light, uh, like a weight sensitive brand, I won't say they're the lightest of the lightweights out there, but they're a weight sensitive brand. But by simple virtue of the fact that this thing is tip to tail, tongue to bumper, nearly 40 foot long, there's just no way in good conscience I can ever recommend any half ton towing this thing even if your half ton has big heavy capacities it just to me does not feel like a good smart safe pairing but up here in that big front pass through notice how you have that pegboard that little potential organizer board over on the right i think is cool and you do have an enclosed docking center which is nice although um your solar controllers down in there i do sort of wish your solar charge controller was located like up inside by your main control panel, but that's just me. One of the things that is nice about this, uh, mostly due to the fact that um, it, it is a single bath RV. I, I can definitely respect people who are gonna say, wait a minute, you can sleep eight, 12, 15 butts in this thing, but there's only one toilet for them? That doesn't make sense. Well, okay, I can respect that. Some people camp differently. Um, that's actually a very American way of looking at things. And I don't mean that in a derogatory sense. There's just different cultures have different things. Like uh, if you go across the pond over in England, it's not uncommon for large families to all share one bathroom. It is just far less common in our culture uh, over here. And there's nothing wrong with that. Just different strokes, different folks, you know. Power tongue jack, power awning, power four corner stabilizers. But let's talk about that awning real quick. No doubt. A, a, a good chunk of it is eaten up between the stable steps and the kitchen slide. It just is what it is. There's no, someone's going to ask, well, can I option it this way? No, you, you can't. You can't make requests and alterations. That's kind of one of the differences between RV construction and something like home construction, you know. In a house, if you wanted a wall moved a little bit or something restructured, you can do that. Not in RVs, especially in a laminated wall RV. The walls are built with specific mounting points in specific locations. So there's literally nothing like in the slide face to structure a uh, an awning to even if you wanted to. It's just not possible. So it's, like I said, good news, bad news. This thing, though, what do you think of this? This, I, I'm almost going to call it an outside entertainment convenience station. I don't know that camp kitchen is the right phrase for it. It doesn't have any kind of cooker or anything like that, although it does have a gas grill quick connect right down below. You can actually see the little white warning propane hookup flag uh, sticking out there below the bottom. That double outdoor dorm fridge kind of situation it's a little different but i don't know i think with this many people maybe having extra drinks and stuff outside to cut down on foot traffic might be a handy thing we're prepped and ready both for a backup camera as well as a telescopic removable ladder the roof is fully walkable i like that they're using white ac shrouds on these to maximize the efficiency of the air units second air is optional on this once again although my lord with the size of this uh I can't imagine owning something like this without a second air myself, but if you're a boondock type person who doesn't camp with a generator, doesn't run the air, maybe that's not a problem for you. Now the underbelly, last little note here, 
It is enclosed. Um, it is forced air heated. It's a good extended season package. And just for a little bit of extra protection, they do also include holding tank heaters on these standard, um, which, uh, you know, it's not going to make it like any weather capable. But if, it, if the weather person gets it wrong, if you get a hard snap of cold tonight and it comes back up tomorrow, that should help you get through. So let me know. Good, bad, ugly in between? You share your thoughts the same way I've done with you. I've tried to be as fair and candid as possible, but if there's something I've missed or other questions or just feedback you'd like to offer, leave us some notes. I'll leave you links in the video description to check for pricing and availability on this one. I would like to leave you links for other similar bunkhouses, but I don't know that I've ever seen another really, really similar trailer maybe one of those big imagines i'm not sure it's a different kind of critter i think it's carved its own little unique identity which i commend them for certainly not for everybody but i i respect effort and originality until next time take care stay safe have fun and happy camping everyone mm -hmm.